Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. It is 559 on Friday, September the 6th. I'm Will Puckett. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News this morning. Well, it's a glorious morning to start off your Friday. It's nice and cool outside. A little bit of fog, though, so be ready and aware when you're heading to work or taking your kids to school. Let's bring in meteorologist Kelly McShane for a better breakdown of just what to expect. Kelly, good morning. Good morning, Will. It's finally Friday and we're waking up on a little bit of a foggy note out there over into Whitesburg. You can see that fog settling into the downtown area, so be very careful traveling throughout Letcher County and throughout the entire Cumberland Valley region as well. Satellite and radar, we are clear this morning. However, we did see some clouds from Hurricane Dorian yesterday. Those clouds are now well off to our east into central Virginia. Now temperatures around the region waking up a little bit on the cooler side, so be sure to grab the jacket as you head out this morning. Those temperatures in the mid to upper 50s throughout the region, and I will have the temperature trend heading into your front. Friday as well as your weekend coming up here in just a little bit. Will. Alrighty, Kelly, thank you. Well, the death toll from Hurricane Dorian in the Bahamas is now at 30 and is expected to rise. Officials are still trying to get more teams onto the islands to help residents and search through the devastation. Right now, Dorian is just off the coast of North Carolina as a Category 1 storm. CBS's Katherine Johnson is in, is in Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina with the latest. People on the Abaco Islands in the Bahamas are desperate to get out. I'm out there for it with my sister, my two sons, my daughter and two granddaughters. It's horrible. It's, it's un... you can't live here. Widespread devastation caused by Hurricane Dorian has halted any semblance of normalcy. Many are waiting at the airport, hoping for a seat on a plane. We still have babies here. We still have elderly people here. They're not living up to their word. At the same time, relief organizations from around the world are trying to get in. At this point in time, we're getting, we're going past chaos at this point. It is no forward to say better, it's getting worse. So we need any help we can get. Hurricane Dorian is now thrashing North Carolina. Officials warned coastal residents to evacuate, but some chose to ride this storm out. I'm not a stranger to uh, hurricanes. I'm just gonna bunker down and hold in and wait for it to pass. More than a dozen tornadoes touched down on Thursday as Dorian sat off the coast of the Carolinas. I'm damn lucky. This tornado started as a water spout but came ashore and tore through an RV park in North Carolina. Me and my wife and the cat took shelter. We went into the bathroom, power went out. We were there less than a minute. And in South Carolina, exploding transformers and downed power lines left thousands in the dark. Katherine Johnson, CBS News, Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. Officials in Virginia have now ordered coastal evacuations. Hurricane watches have been issued as far north as Canada for this weekend. We now know the funeral arrangements for Lauren Doc Holliday. He is the retired state trooper killed earlier this week in a crash. Visitation for Holiday is Saturday from 4 until 9. His funeral is Sunday at 2 p.m. All services will be held at the First Federal Center here in Hazard. Holiday or Doc, as many called him, died a day short of his 44th birthday. This morning, the Breathitt County Judge Executive will appear in court. Jeff Noble faces official misconduct, abuse of public trust, and theft charges. Police arrested him late last month. They say he used county money to put diesel fuel in his personal truck. He will be arraigned in that case today. Noble already faces charges in a separate case. Just days before his arrest, a grand jury indicted him for allegedly buying lumber with county money for personal use. This morning will mark day three of a hot goods coal evidentiary hearing. Lawyers and black jewel miners will return to Charleston, West Virginia bankruptcy court. The debate is whether coal being blocked by miners in Cumberland should be moved. It is unclear if the hearing will wrap up today and whether the judge will rule immediately following. Three people, including a Pikeville woman, died in what police say was a DUI wreck in central Kentucky. We are told it started when a Clark County Sheriff's deputy tried to pull over Tammy Rodriguez, who they suspected of driving under the influence. She then took off. Lexington police say after Rodriguez merged onto Interstate 75 in Lexington, she pulled a U-turn and drove the wrong way for about a mile before hitting one car head-on, then hitting another and flipping it over. 
Rodriguez's sister, Debbie Bevins of Pikeville, was in the truck with her. She died at the scene. The interstate was closed for about 12 hours while police investigated. The collision reconstruction uh, unit does a very good job of collecting each and every piece of information, documenting it with photographs and documenting it with a drawing. Um, there's just a whole lot of moving parts to this type of investigation. 26-year-old Taylor Blevins and 20-year-old Caitlin Bailey of, were in uh, one of the cars that was hit as well. They died at the scene. Police say Rodriguez was hurt but is expected to survive. She is charged with DUI and having no operator's license. She could face additional charges in the future. New this morning, we now know the name of a person killed yesterday in a Perry County crash. The single car crash happened early yesterday morning. It happened on 15 Mile Branch Road. 35-year-old Reuben Collins died. No word on if charges will be filed. A new event wrapped up the first day of the SOAR Summit in Pikeville. A pitch competition was held and 10 individuals were able to present their business and ideas to a panel of judges where they competed for cash prizes. WYMT's Emily Bennett spoke with the winners and has more. 10 small businesses competing for a $5,000 prize. So this idea was to not only have this competition, but to have connectivity for these folks to get their product out there and for people to hear what their idea is. Judge Jeff Jones says these businesses are limited and SOAR wanted to give them a chance to find resources. When you bring together a thousand people, you know, there's so much connections that we can make and such a difference by being able to share some of these ideas. The range of businesses was wide, from technology to improve interview skills to all natural foods, hemp products, and remote controlled lawnmowers. It's incredibly diverse, and I think we've only just, just actually just nipped the top of the, uh, the uh, ability for a whole lot of ideas to come forward, hopefully in the future, that we can have more events like this. The business that took home the grand prize was Tree of the Field, a company that produces environmentally friendly products. Only people who don't want to be eaten by mosquitoes need the skeeter log. That's the only one. So any place that a person is going to be hiking or sitting on their front porch or by a pool or a backyard, the mighty skeeter log can burn a gentle smoke and send the essential oils into the air. The skeeter log is fire dispersed essential oils. You just break it in pieces and, and scatter it on a fire or burn it in the chimney where it will smoke for six hours. The business is growing as they have pitched to Walmart, Sam's Club, and more. It has gone from small of small shops and from um, uh, state parks and so forth to large box stores and large chains and a large holding company's interest. So we're giving them a chance to make a difference. In Pike County, Emily Bennett, WYMT Mountain News. The pitch competition wrapped up the first day of the SOAR Summit. More than 100 booths filled the Appalachian Wireless Arena. Many gathered for brainstorming sessions in the morning before attending the discussion session to give their ideas to create a brighter future for Appalachia. SOAR Executive Director Jared Arnett said this event creates a platform so their ideas can be seen and hope can be found. That they have hope for the future of Appalachia, not only hope, but uh, inspired to be a part of it, to start a new business, to start a new program, to get involved in their communities, and to see that they're not alone in this, what can sometimes feel hopeless in the challenges that we face in the region. Today was all leading up to the main summit. Governor Matt Bevin and Congressman Hal Rogers will speak, including many others. Several big announcements are expected. We will have coverage here on WYMT, WYMT.com, and HNI. Well, Big Sandy Community and Technical College hosted Congressman Hal Rogers yesterday during a dedication ceremony for the building that bears his name. The Hal Rogers Advanced Technology Center, which offers training for technical jobs in electricity, technology, and more, was officially opened yesterday with a ribbon cutting ceremony. Local leaders joined Congressman Rogers for the dedication, which was followed by a tour of the facility. Since students were in class, the tour allowed folks to see the future of the region in action. Rogers says the high tech center is one of the ways Eastern Kentucky is being put on the map and helping to keep the region connected. The only limit now is whether or not we have the imagination to think about a new way to do things. Congressman Rogers says the forward thinking of those involved with the new technology center is helping to pave the way for a stronger workforce. Walgreens joins the growing number of retailers asking customers to not openly carry weapons in its stores. Walmart and Kroger announced similar policies this week. The request follows increasing pressure on businesses to take action to ward off potential mass shootings at stores and workplaces.
Temperatures are still a little bit chilly out there this morning. We're waking up to those temperatures in the mid to upper 50s throughout the region. A few lower 50s even popping up. So overall, a chilly start to the day. Be sure to grab the jacket, light jacket as you head out the door. Visibility into Harlan County looking very reduced, almost zero miles of visibility. Over into Monticello, you're looking at about half a mile of visibility. So be very, very careful on the roads this morning, traveling through those areas. Now heading into this afternoon, it is going to be an absolutely gorgeous day for us here in the mountains. A mixture of sun and clouds throughout the day and throughout the afternoon with winds pretty light and temperatures right around 80 degrees. I will have that Friday night football forecast as well as the weekend forecast coming up here in just a little bit, Will. Alrighty, Kelly, we'll toss it over to you in a few. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on Mountain News this morning. More news is on the way. Martin County will receive millions of dollars here what it'll be used for. Plus, more incentive to go to the University of the Cumberlands. Hear how they're not only lowering tuition, but also providing free textbooks.